one go. Hello, folks. <laughs> We're back. Uh, well, the, our ground seed is virtually finished, so uh, I guess the next step is uh, I'm going to try and fit the skirts and uh, get them blocked in today. Yeah, what all have we done so far? So far, we have covered the gullet of the saddle, put in the seat strainer, uh, covered the horn, tooled the top of the horn, stitched the top of the horn, and uh, built the ground seat. Very good. So uh, now we're ready to uh, fit our skirts and uh, get them blocked in. If we get that done today, which I'm pretty sure we will, unless uh, something happens, uh, we'll try and fit the back rigging and get that on. So anyway, here we go. Is that okay? Yep. All right. This is my ballpark pattern that I'm going to use. And it, I think it'll be pretty close. This is going to be a, a pretty round skirted saddle, a pretty small skirted saddle. I like a small skirt. Uh, it, uh, oh, I've got to cut the... First thing I need to do is cut the, the handhold hole. Oh, we're getting to the handhold. We were talking yes. about that last time I actually got the ground yeah. in, how we were going to be cutting that out. Yeah, I'm going to show you how we're going to so cut that So we're going to get our out. table set up and then we will talk about it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, the saddle's upside down and I've got the 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 strainer cover. I've got it peeled back because I've got to get here to where the the strainer starts. That's where the the handhold, the back of the handhold is going to be. And I'm just going to take this long handled or this long bladed straight knife and I'm just going to stab it all the way through this ground seat. And this ground seat is pretty thick, so I'm just going to work it around. careful and not cut out this flap. This this flap here actually turns around and covers the front of this cut that I'm making right now when all is said and done. Did I move that so you can't see it? Or? I think it should still be good for right now. I'm going to get a pair of scissors here. I'm going to relieve a little bit of this. I'm going to get this turned back a little more. Seems like it's a pretty good fight. It is a pretty well. It's a pretty thick piece, and everything's pretty, uh, pretty firm because it's cemented together pretty tight. But I don't know if you all can see this, but I just followed the the curvature of this the strainer here in the front. Okay, now I'm going to turn the saddle back upright. Kind of stretch this around, make sure it's going to make that turn, which it is. And I'm going to cut some of this off.
I'm just making a couple of cuts to kind of relieve a little bit of strain because this has got a stretch. So now I'm going to cement this. Hopefully I can do it without knocking that cement tub off. I kind of clean this ground seed up a little bit between the time that we quit last week and today. I didn't really do much other than just to clean it up so and smooth it out. You're just taking <clears throat> the rest of the little humps that you felt in there? Yeah. And you know, I can still work on this ground seed a little bit if I need to later on. Until I get things covered, I can still do plenty of stuff with it. Alright. Now let me get my handy dryer. Handy dandy cement dryer. Went over and got a rub stick here. this out. That part that comes from the strainer, that's going to be seen there? This this front lip here is the only thing you will ever see. You'll never see this because your seat's going to be covering it, but you'll be able to see down through that hole and see the front of this. This will all be covered here because your fork cover is going to come over it. That looks pretty good to me. Let's turn it over and look at the bottom of it. Yeah, that's going to be all right. Okay. I saw in your gullet too, you've got some marks laid out. Or you aren't yeah, I think I'm going to finger carve this gullet here. I, I might do that today. We'll see how, how the rest of it goes. But it'll probably be at some point in the future. Because I think I'm going to have the skirts on there and blocked in, and we've got to leave it alone until they dry. So, anyway, let me get this bench pad put back up. <clears throat> now, this is this is a pretty small round skirt, the shape that I've got going here, and I don't know if it's going to fit or not, but I'm going to check it out right here. I want the point of this skirt to come right about on the inside, right about there. center up in the back. I'm just going to eyeball that. Oh, by the way, I made I made myself a center line mark here and I just eyeballed that. I stood behind the saddle and found what I what I thought was the center of the horn. Then I stood in front of the saddle and found what I thought was the center of the camel. Then I just made a straight line mark there. That'll be useful later on, but not right this minute. At this point will be useful because I'm trying to... That looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to change that skirt at all. So can you talk about what would, what determines that? Uh, you... Just the way it looks. Uh, the way it is, I might have to come out here a little bit further to get in front of the the uh, front of the bars but this is this is plenty good because my uh, 
seat jockey will come out and probably end up about right there which will cover the front of the bars nicely you know and leave leave a little reveal around the front of the skirt <clears throat> down here this it, this saddle is going to be a 7 8 rigging and i think that's where i've got that that former mark there might be just about right but i i won't know that till a little bit the later. marks that you have on your pattern here are from a previous saddle you did yes yeah <clears throat> You know, and I mark these patterns up, you know, when I'm when I'm fitting them to the saddle, but shoot, everything seems to fit pretty well right here. I've got plenty of room in back. You don't want your skirt to stick out too far, but you want it your your rigging is gonna come out over your over the back of the bars and then your back jockey is gonna come over and cover over it. So you've gotta have enough room for that. That looks pretty good. That's I'm not going to change that. Well, let's look at the. Uh, I moved this camera, uh, so let's look at the front part of it here and, and look at our dimensions on the front, front, and then. Okay. Uh, so now, what are you, you are you marking something here? No, I'm not marking anything because I'm going to leave this just like it is. Yeah, I will mark it, just just for. Uh, the sake of everybody that's here. Okay, I'm going to say this is the way this this saddle is going to lay. And I'm going to just make a mark on the bars all the way around. Okay, so I've got plenty of room in front. My, my front jockey is going to come over and, and cover over this, and I'll have enough for a, a, a slight reveal around the front. Uh, it's, it drops down enough. This is going to be an in skirt rigging, and it drops down enough for my rigging plate to be in there. My stirrup leather will ride right across that. Then my back jockey, my back rigging will come out something like this and then the back jockey will come out about like this so I've got plenty of room there but not a lot extra so I'm just gonna this this probably came off of another uh, 15 and a half inch seat you know which is what this one is in a, in a saddle that is similar to this okay now I'm gonna set this pattern aside and I'm gonna take these two uh, ballpark pattern pieces of leather over to the the water tub and get them wet. You got a regular old tub of water. Dip this one one more time. One one piece of leather is always going to be heavier than another one, so you got to take that into consideration. All right. I'm put them over here and I'm going to slip them both. Hand slip. What this does is it uh, closes the pores of the leather a little bit, makes it smoother. It takes a lot of the stretch out, flattens it out nice. But I always do this to leather that I'm going to tool and put on a saddle for the most part. Fork cover I'm not going to slick because I want to be able to stretch it while it's on the on fitting to the saddle itself. And I'll be rubbing it with a rub stick and be doing the same thing to
Now I'm going to put my pattern on here and just trace it off and cut each piece. cut this one with the pattern and use it as a pattern for the other one because <clears throat> your cuts always get off just a little bit off of what you've drawn so if you use one as a pattern for the other you're cutting two of the same Remember to flip your patterns so you have a right and a left instead of two lefts. That's kind of disastrous when you do that. I have. So I'm speaking from experience. John Woodson. Okay, now I'm going to lace these two pieces together. And this is temporary. First off, I'm going to make myself a, a lace line, which will be <clears throat> one thing I want to point out to you guys. So when you lace a set of skirts, you never lace them all the way to the back. I'll, I will leave about two inches in the back because if, if they're held together tight here in the back they don't have any room to spread when the horse moves and you will loin sore a horse with a lot nine times out of ten with with one that is laced all the way to the back so I'm gonna take in and set this at about three quarters or or an inch it doesn't really matter I'm gonna make, make myself a lace line about like that I'm going to stop about there on each side. I'm just going to eyeball each side. Then I'm going to make myself five lace holes. I'm going to go one up here, one back here, and then I'll set one in the middle and one in the middle between those two. And then I can just match those from this side. And this is just temporary. Eventually you'll use a piece of leather lace to do this with, but I'm just going to use a piece of artificial sinew right now because I'm going to take this apart later. Making this lace just like the one I did for the saddle horn. Just stabbing the thread and pulling it through, making a little 
slip knot deal there. That way it won't pull out of the needle near as bad. You got enough to get the job done? And I believe so, out. yeah. Okay, now I'm just going to punch, punch these holes. When I lace this permanent, I'll make these holes quite a bit bigger. kind of a weak spot in this up at the top in this one skirt but I'll take that into consideration when I do my skirt plugs which I will explain to you later on in this process okay now I got to come back over here off the edge of the table Tony all right I'm just gonna do kind of a I don't know what you call this lace I'm just gonna start at the back both holes Back of your skirt's pretty much even back here. When I cut a big old long piece of lace, a lot of people think that I'm wasting lace because I don't need that much, but I'm going to keep these needles and threads handy, and chances are I'll be using them for something else later on. Make sure everything's nice and even. I'm just gonna tie. I call this a surgeon's knot, just a double overhand knot. And do the same thing the other direction. Much. I'm going to take my hammer and just tap this down to make sure everything's flat. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the tree with these two skirts. Right. Set this tree approximately where it's going to go. I'm going to try and just even everything up. Remember, I've got the 
The back, I'm going to make the, a hole right here. This is the center of my back camel right here. And this is the center of my fork cover right there. Now I've got those marks and I've got a pretty good reference point to go to. Okay, now I'm going to come around the front and I'm going to start myself myself a reference hole right here. I'm going to get a nail or two. Okay, I'm going to tack this in. Notice I said tack. That means I'm not going to nail this solid. Because these skirts are going to be on and off of this saddle numerous times between now and when everything is said and done. Okay, now I've got the front of my skirts located. They're both, I want to make sure they're both the same height up and down. Make sure I keep the back of them in the center of the saddle back here. So now I'm going to turn this around where, I'm, where the back is facing the front. Pull this back here where I can have a little access to it. And I'm basically going to do the same thing in back. I'm just going to make some reference tacks. There again, I'm going to make sure I'm still in the center. Here's my center hole. So I want to make sure the center of the skirt is still in the center there. And there's no specific spot to put these nails because like I said they're going to come back out okay got those on there now I'm going to put my bench pad back down turn this saddle over upside down on the on the table here. Get these knives out of the way. I don't want to knock them over. Take this saddle and turn it upside down. And if you'll see here I got a point a pinpoint here and here on each skirt, front and back. All right? Bars and at the front, uh, right on the gullet. Now I'm going to put it one more pin on the gullet. I'm going to bend the skirt back around here. Pin that. I think I'll put another one back here on the bars too.
see I got a nice smooth fit against the against the gullet of the saddle. My uh, back of the bars are going to be pretty well pinned down where they'll stay where they need to be. Okay, now we're going to block these skirts in. And by block the skirts in, what I mean is we're going to make it take the shape of these bars. The only place that I'm not going to do anything is right where these stirrup leather slots are. And I'm going to mark those right here. I'll do the same to the other side once I get around there. But I'm just going to take my... And that's the reason these need to be fairly wet. But I'm going to take my hammer and just shake these around right against the edge of this bar. And the purpose of this, when this saddle gets on the horse, it's going to be resting on the bars of the saddle and not the skirts. If your skirts are too stiff, which they ought to be fairly stiff, it'll it'll want to ride on the skirts rather than the bar of the saddle, and the bar of the saddle is what is actually fitting the horse right. Okay, now I'm going to get me a mouthful of nails here, or a handful, whatever. I'm going to go right to the edge here. I'm, I'm just barely getting into the tree and then I'm going to bend it and kind of stretch it around. Take this rub stick and kind of and kind of feel the edge of that bar as you come around. Can you get a good picture of that, Tony? Can can they see what I've done here? Yep. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to go to finish this around the back. And right back here is the back of my stirrup leather slot, so that's where I'm going to start blocking back here.
Smooth that out. The reason I don't block it in where the stirrup leathers are is because the stirrup leather wouldn't be able to move then. But <clears throat> these Arizona bars, there's a slot at the front, but it's tapered to the back, so there's still plenty of room for the stirrup leather to swing. All right, now let's turn it around and do the other side. Okay, skirts are blocked. Let's put it back on the stand. Set it on here. Make sure everything's about where it's supposed to be. It is. Then I just I want to go around and shape this skirt, make sure everything's symmetrical because when this dries, that's the way it's going to stay for the duration. I always kind of like to cup mine where they where the, where they cup to the inside. If you don't, they'll want to curl to the outside. Okay, what I was saying is this skirt is a bit thinner than this skirt back here in this spot, and this that'll be highly visible place. So when I put my skirt plugs in, which is a stiffener that will go underneath here, this one will be a bit thicker than this one to compensate. You know, and you will always have that problem if if you don't. Uh, I would like to know how you got around it. Okay, I'm going to call that pretty good. Can I uh, turn this, turn it towards you this way? Will that work? Okay, since we've got the, uh, the skirts blocked in, we can build our back rigging. So, let me put this away. Our back rigging parts and our back rigging rings.
I usually use a three inch D ring on the back. If I was if I was using a D ring on the front, I would use a three and a half inch. Personal preference, and that's that's what most people do use as far as rigging goes. <clears throat> this rigging is fairly standard. This will be a, the back rigging will be pretty standard on most saddles. You might have a little bit of difference as far as the shape right here. And you might have a little bit of difference as far as the width right here. You want it to come out and cover your bars. I, I generally lace these on. So I want it to be probably a half to three quarters of an inch beyond the, the bar of the saddle. And right here, looks like a bit large. So I'm going to... I'm not going to change this pattern, but I am going to change it when I find the piece of leather that I cut. The front of this D ring should be corresponding with the point of your candle. You notice when I fold this, it matches it. When I, when I fold this around, it matches this, this arc right here. And this arc is pretty good. So, you get one of these D-rings and actually put it on here. That's what I'm going to call it right here. And that's pretty good. It'll be hanging down just a bit below the skirt, about a half an inch, which is good because when the the, the back billet wraps around here. There's some bulk there, and it'll actually be below the skirt, which, which will keep it from sticking out like this. So it'll hang pretty nice and flush. Okay. Now I've got to go to the water tank and, and get these two pieces wet. I don't know if you remember, but this this is the rigging, and it needs to be a, a nice, firm piece of leather. The further up on the back you can take it out of, the better it's going to be. You definitely don't want anything that's flanky at all. So, I'm going to slick these down. Get them nice, flattened out, slick, smooth. Take a lot of the stretch out of them. first because it's the one I've got marked because I'm going to trim it as a bit. Okay, position wise, can you see everything?
Alright, now you just use a pattern for the other one. When you're doing this, this piece of leather is plenty big. And this part up here is the firmest. And when you get down here, it's got some fat wrinkles and stuff in it. So I'm going to hold it up here as far as I can. Just take advantage of your leather the best you can. Take advantage of the characteristics of the piece that you're cutting out. Okay, I'm just going to smooth this back out, cut it. Alright, next, get this out of my way, the water out of my way. Now I'm going to go over here to the sky with glass. Alright, first thing, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, this is a French edger. And this edge right here, I'm going to do like this to it, make it just feather thin on the very edge. The reason being, when I put this up against the cannel, any irregularities, it can just mush those out of there. Now, I'm going to sky this part down here, which is what meets it against the panel when it's folded. Then I'm going to take and sky this down. I'm not going to sky it to a feather edge, but take probably three quarters of it off. being because it's going to fold up against this and I want it to just taper off instead of just have a, a sharp blunt edge there. About a quarter of it, or a third of it, maybe. A third of the thickness of the leather left? Yes, a third of the thickness of the total thickness. I'll show it to you when I get it described here.
Okay, I've got a full thickness here. It tapers off here where I've skived it to a feather edge. And here I've skived all but about a quarter or a third of it. Got it? Okay. Now, let me put this on here and see about how it fits. That'll be good. That'll work there. Okay. So you're just making it sure that it fits the back of the candle? Yeah, okay. and that's and that's why I why I put a French edger on this. Let me turn this around where you get it. Because this part here is French edged, which which is it's about a forty five degree angle, give or take. But see, I can I can mush this up against the, the side and mush that that part out where it'll go up and fit nicely. But anyway, that's going to work good. So let me get some uh, number nine copper copper rivet and burrs and and a couple of pieces of equipment, and I'll come over here and we'll rivet this together. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is is uh, bevel the edge on this because I want it to be pretty, even though it won't be seen very often. Put a little bit of Duff saddle soap on it. You can use any kind of liquid or solid glycerin saddle soap to do this with. Buffs is nice. I really like it because it smells really good. Then I'll just burnish it with a piece of canvas. Same thing to this one. This is just water. And since you got part of it wet, you're gonna have to get all of it wet. I got I wet the whole thing, yes sir. That's done. Let's uh, put one of our D-rings on here. Fold it about where it goes. When you're cutting your riggings, I like to, to be nice and snug. If you got them where there's a lot of play back and forth, it only gets worse in time. So make them nice and snug and hopefully they'll stay about that way. What size rivets and holes are you using? These are uh, number nine rivets, number nine copper rivet and burrs. 
and this is a I'm not sure it's about a I don't know it's a number nine hole yeah <laughs> it's about an eighth of an inch hole there again you, you can make the holes so they're pretty snug too because that won't ever hurt anything it'll just be hard to get them to go through the hole but once you get them through there they're nice and tight okay I've got that set now I'm going to turn it over put the burrs on and I've got a set of Wayne Juski rivet setters that I'm going to use here which are really cool and I'll show you why they're really they're they're a pretty good rivet setter but they got a really cool feature to it Okay, now I'm going to dome these over, and his domer has some little, little features in it that give this a really neat look to it. Let me dome them and then we'll show you on the camera. See it? It's got these little lines in it. Just a, just a little feature. It's not just a flat domed rivet. You know, it's it's got a little style to it. But I really like it. Okay, let's do the other one. off my bench iron a little bit I think. Alright, very nice. I like it. Now I'm going to put these over here out of my way. some screws. Alright, we're getting ready to put this back rigging on. We got it all riveted together. Everything's burnished and, and uh, skived alright. So, let's see if we can get it on there. Now remember, I, I French edged this one part, so I'm going to kind of set it up there a little bit close and, and mush it down. If you can see, it's a, um, I got a pretty good fit there. First rivet I'm going to put in would be, I'm just going to put two or three rivet, or two or three screws in this. <clears throat> when you put rigging screws in, you want them to be perpendicular to the tree. You don't want to do it at an angle. If, if you drive them in at an angle, they don't have near the shear strength. So I'm going to put another one about right here. And these spikes are just to get the hole started. Stainless steel screws. You don't have to use stainless steel, but I've got them, so I'm going to use them. And 
you just want to drive them in far enough where they dimple the leather. You don't want to drive them all the way through the leather. Are those just a pan head? Uh, these are a, an oval head. Pan heads work fine. And I'll put one more screw in just for good measure up here. What did I do with my hammer? It's right there. Uh, put it up right here. Got to be careful. I don't want to get in the way of where my string holes are going to be. switcheroo here. We'll go to this side. Okay, before I do this, I'm going to make a smart string. This is going to be really hard to do. The strings usually aren't that smart. Smart string is just a string with a loop in one end. And up here where my little center mark is on my back panel. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to mark this point right here. Now I'm going to move back over here. And position this so those points match. And that's going to work out just right. It's hard to do this without being in the way. Back rigging is on and set, but I think I'm going to put a nail or two in just to hold those corners down. Now, I'm going to kind of shake this around the, the edge of the bar. Notice the bar, the edge of the bar is right here. And I'm going to put holes in here later that I'm going to lace this on with. This will be laced to the skirt itself part of what holds everything together. Oh 
All right. Now I moved everything completely out of whack, didn't I? That's right. What are we doing now? Well, I really would like to let the skirts dry and cure before I try to fit the front rigging because I'll be wallering everything around. Okay, today we uh, we cut the hole for our uh, our handhold, and we uh, fit our skirts, got them wet, and blocked those in, and we fit our back rigging and put those together and screwed those on the tree. So now we're gonna stop because we've got to let the the skirts dry and cure out a little bit before we fit the front rigging, which will be probably Wednesday. We'll Friday. Friday. I'm sorry. Friday. So we will do that and possibly fit the back panel at that time also. So now uh, that's all we can do today as far as the live part goes, but uh, I'm going to start tooling on the fenders a little bit. We'll see you next time. See ya.